If you're anything like me, you'll have seen the phrase Credit Suisse plastered all over finance YouTube this last weekend, and how they may trigger a Lehman style crash. Which has probably got you thinking, what is Credit Suisse and what in the world is a Lehman style crash? Well, in this video, I'm going to try and break it down as simply as possible and let you know what's going on and discuss if they'll actually cause a crash or not. First, what is Credit Suisse? They're a global investment bank that offer finance services and they're based in Switzerland. They've been struggling for about a year now with rumours of their finances not looking too good. And their stock price is down almost 60% this year alone. The bank had significant exposure to Archigos Capital, which was a highly leveraged fund that collapsed in dramatic fashion halfway through 2001. It also had major exposure to Greensill, who were a fintech company aiming to make financing fairer, which also imploded in March 2021. These two crises cost Credit Suisse billions and put the bank into a not too great position heading into 2022. And to kick off this year, they've had a huge data leak and been found guilty of money laundering relating to a Bulgarian drug ring. And even worse, this year we've seen the bond market has gone crazy across Europe and North America, with bond yields soaring in a way they never have before. This is a huge problem because it's created this never before seen volatility in what should be a very stable government bond market. Banks like Credit Suisse rely heavily on government bonds for stability to keep things in check. When banks hit long periods of volatility, their traditional models tend to break, which causes them to frantically rush around trying to stabilise themselves. For a well-established bank, that's difficult to handle, but manageable. But for a struggling bank, it's even worse. Rumours are now that the bank is just struggling to stay above water. Their credit default swap spreads have hit their highest level since the depths of the 2008 financial crisis, which are often known as CDS. The simplest way to think of a CDS is a form of protection, which allows one bank to offset their risk to another bank who takes all the risk, but in return they'll pay them a fee for doing so. When a bank takes out a loan, they have the option to purchase a credit default swap. This acts as insurance for them in case they don't get paid back. If this goes wrong, the bank who assumed all the risk isn't in too much trouble because they own all of the underlying assets and they'll be collecting premiums from all of their other default swaps. The problem, however, comes when the bank, in this case Credit Suisse, has taken on too much risk and they don't have the capital to pay people back if they default on their loans. This is where people are drawing similarities to the 2008 stock market crash and the Lehman Brothers. There's tweets comparing Lehman's CFO then and Credit Suisse's CEO now, which are alarmingly similar. On September 15th, 2008, the Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy, which saw hundreds of employees dressed in business suits, leaving their offices boxes in hand one by one. At the time of this collapse, Lehman was the fourth biggest investment bank in the United States, with over 25,000 employees across the world. It had 639 billion in assets and 613 billion in liabilities. The bank was a symbol of excess at the time and a fallen giant in the crisis that shortly followed. The company, along with many other financial firms, branched into mortgage-backed securities and collateral debt obligations, i.e. credit default swaps. In 2003 and 2004, with the US housing bubble well underway, they acquired five mortgage lenders which specialised in Alt-A loans without the proper documentation. An Alt-A loan in the US is essentially mortgages that have a higher loan to value and typically lower down payments to the amount of debt borrowed, which makes them much more risky and people would definitely default on them more frequently. The firm secured 146 billion of mortgages in 2006 and reported record profits every year from 2005 to 2007, with 4.2 billion in net income. But this is where things started to go wrong. In 2008, their leverage was high at 31, and their mortgage security portfolio made it highly susceptible to the deteriorating market conditions. In March 2008, its stock price plummeted nearly 48% over fears it would be the next Bear Stearns, a firm who had gone bust just months earlier. By April, they'd managed to convert some stock into shares at a premium, generating them 4 billion, which restored some confidence. However, the stock continued to decline 
decline as people questioned the true value of their mortgage portfolio. And by 2008, they announced a second quarter loss of 2.8 billion. The firm also boosted its liquidity to 45 billion by reducing some of its assets, cutting the leverage down, but by then it was just too late. The firm was doomed and filed for bankruptcy later that year. The main coincidence people are drawing here is between them both being heavily involved in credit default swaps and just how high they have soared. Lehman CDS spreads remained fairly consistent until the week before they went bust. But what's actually even more interesting about this whole situation is, were the Lehmans really the sole cause of the 2008 crash? In the public's mind, the Lehmans collapse ignited all of the explosion that followed. They did have a significant effect on the markets, and the S&P 500 dropped by nearly 5% on the day they filed for bankruptcy. And their effect on the money market funds was a big problem. Yet, there's evidence it wasn't just them. One economist has provided further evidence that it was actually started when the Fed and the Treasury announced they would ask Congress for 700 billion to defuse the housing problem. And there's a lot of other factors that happened around that time, such as the collapse of Bear Stearns just months prior. But it's clear the Lehmans weren't the only reason the market crashed. So there's that, and also a lot of people saying it's nonsense. Analysts suggest that it isn't 2008, and Credit Suisse has multiple options in front of it to escape the current crisis. And they would be wary of drawing parallels with 2008, or even Dutch Bank in 2016. They say Capital Suisse is placed comfortably when it comes to capital adequacy. And while they may face higher financing costs in the meantime, until they're able to restructure, they should be just fine. Another said they'll be unlikely to be going under and it's just scaremongering, while a former employee said they've been de-risking and now have one of the safest balance sheets on the market. And the claims that they're the next Lehman's are complete nonsense from people who have no understanding of financial analysis. It's even been mentioned that Morgan Stanley's CDS in 2011 to 2012 was twice as wide and they didn't go under. Of course, that being said, we could be comparing apples to oranges. The Financial Times added, an exaggeration is easy to see. Year to date, there hasn't been a single default in the index. But everything rides on whether they're able to navigate those choppy waters and restructure efficiently. Hopefully, unlike the Lehmans, it won't be too little too late. They're already buying back debt, cutting expenses and restructuring the company to clean up the balance sheet even further. The other consideration here is it isn't 2008. While people have have high amounts borrowed on the mortgages and inflation is driving rates up, making it more expensive, borrowing isn't what it was in 2008. In 2008, you could virtually make up a salary or use a mortgage advisor to get practically any mortgage you wanted, which is scary. Affordability checks have been better since then, I still argue they need to be better, but overall, this isn't 2008. And remember, as I mentioned, there's no telling that if they did go bust, then it would be the catalyst that the whole market would collapse. Even now, we've got inflation, the energy crisis, and we've got a rocky road ahead of us. If anyone tells you that they're certain of what's going to happen, then do be wary. There's plenty to be worried about, and we should all be aware that we are in a bear market. And just think of this as a small part in our long investment journey, and a great time to buy. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't panic and keep going.